good morning. This is attorney Clint Paris, and you are live on Intech News Radio. This is Straight Up the Middle, a political talk show that we try to keep it straight down the middle, but you know I lean to the left, so unless my uh, co-host, Professor Tony Seabrook, is in the house, hey, listen, we're running on over to our side of the street, and we'll let those on the right fend for themselves. But good morning. I'm glad to be here on this extended Independence uh, Day weekend. And I know for a lot of people, Independence Day has a, a various um, uh, connotations. I know within the African-American community, we celebrate a little bit earlier with Juneteenth. Uh, and that is when uh, the message got to our distant relatives out in Texas that uh, Abraham Lincoln had issued the Emancipation Proclamation. And so it wasn't until uh, Juneteenth that all African descendants within the United States uh, were free. Well, those within the uh, states that had ceded from the Union, as some of y'all may know, there were states that were allowed to keep their slaves for, for some period of time, but not here to give you a history lesson, just to point out the facts of what they are. So to this weekend, we're celebrating Independence Day. And I know for a lot of people, we, we look at that within the African American community and other communities of color, uh, you know, back and forth, kind of, because uh, when America declared its independence on, I think it was July, actually July 3rd, the document was signed on July 4th. There's some confusion about that. Um, but uh, Africans, people of African descent in America, were not free. And in fact, uh, most people in the United States were not free. There was all kinds of different mechanisms and systems of suffrage that were in place that did not allow everyone to access the benefits of being in the new country uh, that others were celebrating. But anyway, hey, listen, I'm like, I, I feel good, man. I was out all week uh, doing a bunch of stuff with my family. We fired up the grill over at the, at the Paris uh, a household and had family over and we really we had a good time so irrespective of what uh, history may say I am happy to celebrate this Independence uh, uh, Day weekend and I hope that you all uh, did as well I mean there's no reason that we should ever let our, our past hinder us from celebrating our present and planning for and making sure that our future is what it should and can be um, so I am happy to be here uh, like I said, continuing to celebrate my extended Independence Day. I got Esteban behind the uh, the um, board working today. He's got his finger pointing at me, so we, we we're in sync. And I and I was expecting to have back in the house uh, Professor T uh, Tony Seabrook. He is our resident uh, Republican, conservative, uh, right right wing uh, thought provoker. Uh, but as you know, he also teaches college, and uh, he is in summer school on Saturday morning, so he's not back with us. He might make it in today or make a call in, but uh, right now, guess what? You've got me live and in 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 charge here. So let's let's just talk about a few things um, that I've had on my mind that I've, that I've been kind of thinking about. And my goodness, I can't even get my topics out. We've already got a caller uh, calling in. If you're listening, the calling numbers. Uh, 813-888-9544. I'm sorry, hold on. Let me get that right. It's 888-813-444-9588. I'm going to write that down. 813. Write it down, Clint. 444 just been here a year Let's get this call on the line. <laughs> and get, get me out of trouble. Good morning, caller. Uh, what's your name? Where you calling from? Good morning. This is the professor. Good morning. Good morning, professor. Yes. First, can I get a status <laughs> On the, on the state of education of America's youths today. What is going on in the classroom? Well, that is a misconception. We have a blended, it is it's non-traditional learning just as well as the one straight out of high school, which you're referring to as youth. So, um, <laughs> but yeah, everyone's happy. This is the last day. I will be back in studio next week, and I'm looking forward to it. Um, I wanted to call in because you know the jobs report came out, and I heard the spill about Juneteenth and the fourth, and I'm so glad. You know, you say you're on the left, but your talking points <laughs> I can I can deal with. I can deal with those talking points, right? And I certainly don't want to make light of Juneteenth and when African Americans learn of their freedom. But what bothered me is is riding that wave. Oh, oh let me stop. 
Did you like Trump's uh, fourth celebration? I know you. I know that you didn't mention that, but right. I, it, well, well, hold, hold on. It's it's on my list. It is actually the first thing <laughs> on my list of things that I wanted to talk about today, because as you know, there was a lot of discussion back and forth leading into that. You know, and, and you have to be savvy enough in America to un- sometime to know when noise is just noise, when it really is an issue or not. Uh, and, I, you know, it's, sometimes it's confusing. You don't know, you don't know when it is or isn't. But uh, my thoughts about the content of the speech I thought was, was solid, but for his reference to the Continental <laughs> Congress, uh, Continental Army taking possession of the airports. I, that one okay. piece I, I I didn't get because I didn't think they had airports back in the 1700s. But beyond that other point, for factually, historically, you know, he's, he will not go down as one of our great, you know, people that he won't never have a tear down this wall moment in a speech or, you know, or, right. or, or, or right. Kennedy. He's not that kind of orator. Uh, and there were right. some technical issues, my understanding was his teleprompters kept going out. Uh, you know, uh, which I thought was an issue because, you know, he complained about Obama reading um, his teleprompters. Uh, but I thought the content of it from a historical standpoint, listen to this, Professor. One of the things I'm very conscious of is most Americans don't really have a good appreciation of real American history. They remember bits and pieces from history class in school, but I think very few of them have taken the time to go visit Andersonville or actually go to Betsy Ross's house in Baltimore and stand on that and look and talk and read about those things firsthand or go research what kind of governmental structure we had from 1776 to 1789 when the, when the Constitution was put in place. So, so the, those are speech from my perspective. It was a good historical recitation of some of America's accomplishments over the years. I'd like to get your thoughts from the right, though. What do you think of the speech? And honestly, I I couldn't watch it, um, so I only saw bits and pieces of the recorded version. I just thought it was a patriotic speech. You're right. He, he's not going to be the orator. He, he's not going to be that guy. But he is a patriotic president. And just leading up to it, the Democrats, you know, I'm calling it the, the headship of the Democrats. You know, they were already declining. Oh, he's going to politicize it. It, it. It's his prerogative. He is the incumbent. He is the president. He can really say what he wants to say. He can celebrate it how he wants to celebrate it. But getting to your point, it was a patriotic speech. The, the version, you know, what I heard of it, there was nothing wrong with that. No, no. It so was I'm very, 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 very Wikipedia ish. You know, you, think, you can look up yeah. facts. Things that, here, here's here's the issue, though. What did you think about the idea of him moving himself into the the, the, the celebration? Because historically, that celebration has been on the mall. There's been a lot of music, performances, act, no speeches really. Boom, they, at the end of the night, they shoot off fireworks. The president has a private group come over to the White House. They pal right. around a little bit. He gives a little, you know, it's, it's 4th of July, America, celebrate. And that's pretty much What did you think of the move, though, for him? To, to actually um, make himself part of the actual celebration. Well, I'm going to do what you said at the beginning of the show. I'm leaning right, bro. And, uh, <laughs> again, it is his prerogative to do that. I, it, it's his showmanship. That, that is his TV. That's his presence. That's what he wants to do. And, and, again, he could change the ceremony how he wants. But he did not – he did it in a way that you had to – really make it hard case that he was politicizing it. But yeah. Okay, so that. let me let me try. Let me try to do that then. Why were VIP tickets given out to Republican donors and to, and to folks RNC? yeah, why would why would that be if it's a it's an American celebration, why are we reserving and giving special benefits to party people? Well, that's the Keep, keep talking. Don't stumble because, now. Come on. No, 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 no. I can't, I can't argue that because that is the political part of it. But here's the thing. In doing so, and this is how I've always felt about the Democrat leadership. They are the most anti-American group of people I've seen. They look for every reason when they're not in office. And, and they really they don't lead with flags and stuff. So the fourth is really just a barbecue for them. Don't mess up their hot dogs because you start talking <laughs> about real stuff about the country. They don't like that because they want to talk about inclusion. On every day of the week, they want to talk about inclusion and what black and brown people aren't getting. They don't want to celebrate the history. So in doing so, 
Yeah. He got a chance to lead right. He got a chance to say he did it how he wanted to do it, and he showed the Democrats, hey, I'm in office. I'm going to do it a bit differently this year. Unfortunately, this is something you can't do anything about. You can't sue me about it. You can't investigate me about it. All right, but let's not confuse it. Right, okay, hold on. Let me cut you off because I won't refute the (laughs) idea that the president has an immense amount of power. But the true evidence of somebody who understands that power is knowing how not to use it such that it demeans the actual power that you have. And I can understand him saying, hey, listen, I'm going to let Republican uh, Party leadership have special seating. And the real powerful move would have been to say, and to the Democratic leadership, party leadership, you all get select seating as well. That that's that would be the American thing to do, I think. Well, I guess I can't argue that. It, and, and, that and that's how he that's how he diminishes himself as a he the, the the idea that he's president of all Americans, the people that agree and disagree. You know, Professor, I've got uh, in in studio with me. He was going to sub in and co-host with me, DJ CEO. His good lips morning, keep moving. Good his, his lips keep moving, but he can't get his <laughs> look, words out. Look, look. So I'm gonna let him. I'm gonna let him come on in and join the conversation. Good, Go ahead, DJ CEO. Good, Darryl good Johnson, morning. Good y'all. morning, Professor. It's good to be here. L- hey. l- let me just. Uh, first, welcome you back, brother, because we we've been missing you. Yeah, they we, they need yeah, you back. Yeah, yeah, they, they we, need you back. I'm, bad, I'm bad. out of control here without you. <laughs> but, but but you said you said that the uh, up that left lane. Yeah, <laughs> you, you said that the president, you know, the left lane is the passing lane. You said that the president was patriotic, and then you said that the Democrats were anti-American. American, yeah. Uh, can you explain well, no, that? I'm saying that the, the, the leadership, the leadership of the Democrats. Okay, the that, 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 but that's us. So, so, so first, first and foremost, tell me what is patriotic to you? Because I, I don't see this president as being that. So maybe I'm missing your definition. This president talks about the the strength and the presence of America. Now, you guys like to make that into a white thing and and, and nationalism. I don't see it that way. Now, I serve this country. I, I am probably the most conservative brother most of you guys know outside of J.C. Watts or somebody <laughs> like that. But my, my point is nothing that the president does comes across to me as an African-American who served this country as non-patriotic. But, when he says about America being great, I, uh-huh. I, I, like to, I like to hear that. When he talks about our, our military being the greatest on earth, I kind of – Frown, I'm not even trying to go, eh, you know, are we real at this point? Do we really have the biggest guns? We talk about nuclear weapons. But I like to hear that. I want to know that this country is the biggest and the baddest. That's right. Uh, that's all I think. Well, you know, he talked about so, Sherman tanks, and we don't even have Sherman tanks. Yeah, they, were, they brought a couple out for him. <laughs> and I can appreciate that. I, and, you know, and, 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 and then from a visceral level, I can see how he's able to use that imagery and things of that nature to evoke that. But listen, Professor, hold on with us. We're going to go to a quick break. Pay a few bills. And listen, you're listening to In Touch News Radio, Reality Radio. This is Straight Up to Middle. I'm Clint Parrish, the attorney in house. We've got the. Uh, our good professor on the phone and DJ CEO sitting there next to me. He's on my right. Let's see what that ends up at. All we'll right. be right back, y'all. Recipe you've been waiting for. A little bit of smooth mixed with a lot of soul. A real play on. You're listening to In Touch Radio. Tell you one more time. 
Ricky Hans Ricky is a legal medical referral service. The doctors and lawyers are not network or trained in handling auto injury claims, giving you the best medical treatment and recovery. Dial one eight four four three six one Rick. That's one eight four four three six one seven four two five. Oh, Ricky, 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 Ricky. Ask Ricky, Ricky. This is Linda Archie with Tayo Temple United Methodist Church. Join us every first and third Saturday of the month at the Village Market East Tampa, 3206 North Sanchez Street. Free parking, free admission, fresh produce, live entertainment, vendor shopping, and delicious cooked food. Join us every first and third Saturday of the month beginning June 22nd. For vendor information, call me, 1-888-991-2502. See our ad in In Touch News or Florida Sentinel. Please call me at 1-888-991-2502. The Village Market at East Tampa, 3206 North Sanchez Street. There we go, Esteban. <laughs> <laughs> uh, man, we'll break you in, man. Yes. One day, this is Attorney Clint Parrish. You're back listening to News Radio, Reality Radio. Everybody's a star. I'm in studio here. I've got uh, DJ CEO Daryl Johnson. Good morning. Listen, the 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 founder, the creator, the visionary of Intech News sitting here in studio hosting with me. I've got the good professor, uh, 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 Tony Seabrook, on the phone. He's still, uh, uh, Professor Seabrook, are you still there with us? Okay, we've lost the professor. Uh, but uh, but Esteban, here, here's my thought process. One day, I envision you being your technician and you're working on the Today Show in, in, in New York with NBC or whoever it may be, and you're going to be back there running the boards and stuff, and you're going to be like, bam, really sharp. Really. Technical director. And people say, hey, Esteban, how did you get that way? Well, man, when I started out, I worked on this TV sh- this show down in Tampa. And they Hey, they, they taught me the right way. So anyway, but I appreciate well, that. Well, let me, just say, let me just say, he'll probably be in New York, but he'll be working for – our our New York uh, uh, broadcast. Yeah, 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 in yeah, News, in New York. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. he'll go up there and launch that. <laughs> but we want him to be. We want wherever you go. That then, but hey, man, that guy's a sharp guy. He, he runs a tight show, and we want that to be the. But anyway, listen, we, we're talking about today's politics. Uh, we just finished talking about the speech, uh, but, but, but about the speech with Donald Trump. And, and let's move over to another topic, uh, DJ C. We were talking about that just briefly, and that was the the is, issue that came up with. The Nike uh, Betsy Ross version of the flag on the shoe. Okay, y'all. So I like history. It's a little bit of history. So, mm-hmm. so I, th- th- there's always been a kind of swirl around about the first flag of the United States. Right. And the first flag, it, it's not in 1776. The first flag or discussion of authorizing a flag doesn't come until the Continental Congress about 1779. Mm-hmm. When they say, hey, that's our, but. It's been a, it's been uh, rumored that in Philadelphia you had some great seamstresses, some great uh, uh, people that could really sew and make mm-hmm. stuff. And during that time, one of the most effective ways of communications within armies was through flags and ships. They used flags to communicate from one ship to another ship, army to army, okay. division of army, what to do, things mm-hmm. of that nature. So flags were, were sewing flags was a burge, it was a big industry. And okay. in, particularly in Philadelphia. Okay. And and so the idea that Betsy Ross made it would have made a flag uh, it's possibly that there were other flags also made, but the story kind of gets built up. I think Betsy Ross's daughter about her George uh, Washington saying to Betsy Ross, "Make this flag." It becomes the flag of the United States, and 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 off they 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 go mm-hmm. with that. And in fact, if you go to Baltimore, right near Reginald Lewis's museum in downtown Baltimore, you talking about the. Kappa, Reginald Lewis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was first, first Beatrice black billionaire. There's just first okay. black billionaire. Yes, uh huh. Uh, brother out of out of Baltimore. But anyway, there's a museum in Baltimore for him. But right down the road, there is a house that allegedly was one of Betsy Ross's homes. And in there, there's historical facts, including flag memorabilia, okay, those kinds of things. So that's where we are. But but so we get the issue with Colin Kaepernick being the 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 person who's focused on as opposing using of the this flag that was allegedly sewn by Betsy Ross in the design as a symbol of independence because in the entire process of America's independence, there was an exclusion 
of independence for African Americans. So irrespective of what they were deciding and celebrating, it in theory had no impact on the black folks living in America at the time because you remained a slave. And Absolutely. in fact, George Washington had a personal uh, slave and valet that that um, that uh, you know accompanied him throughout his career militarily and back family wise. So so that's kind of the backdrop to that. And you know you know how sensitive you are to America's history. But we got a got a caller back on the phone. Let's see who this is. Uh, calling you back on live with Intex News Radio. What's your name? Where you calling from? It's the press professor again. Good, I good. Jump off. I'm trying to do this in between breaks. That's okay, man. I appreciate you very much. So listen, in this segment, uh, uh, professor. Uh, we, we're talking about the Nike Betsy Ross flag hubbub. Is it an issue? Is it not an issue? Is it a publicity stunt? Is it something that, that people should be offended by? Is it a, t- a moment to talk about America's history honestly? What are your What was your take on it? What is it? You know what my take on it is? I was just telling my wife, man, when I show up next week, I'm going to have me a Betsy Ross ball cap on with those 13 stars because you know what? This is just a publicity stunt, and I am a Nike man. I know you're probably not on Twitter, but I tweeted it. Thank you, Nike. I've been a Nike man for 30-plus years, but I'm going to take these 200-plus dollars that I normally spend on the new Air Nike or the Knit, so I'm going to go get me some other shoes. And, yeah, this is this was my issue with Colin Kaepernick. You, you can't tell me it's not about... Uh, there's something about America. We, we know what he wants to point out: police brutality, injustices. I get it, but that's that's an old fight that he's going. But every time a flag crops up, crops up, there he is with the problem. Now I have a hard time believing that they called him. And I'm just air quotes called him and consulted with Colin Kaepernick about this shoe. I have a hard time believing that. But regardless of how it started. It's the same two players again, and now they have an issue with America. And again, this is me on my patriotic, patriotic stump here. It's it's tiring, and I'm I'm waiting for because I already heard Trump say something about Nike. Now I cringe when he goes after private companies and he just bashes them in the in the public eye. But I'm willing to kind of chuckle and turn my head when he bashes Nike because you, you know he's going to do the same thing he did with. With the whole kneeling situation, he's not going to let it go because he's petty like that. We all agree with that. <laughs> let me make a note here. Somebody but, flagged the tape. Professor has admitted that Donald Trump is it's petty. petty. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, let See, me ask you this, Professor. Let me, ask, let me ask you this no, no, question I'm, about. I'm teasing. I'm teasing. Let me ask you this question about. <laughs> <laughs> let me ask this question about the the idea of the flag independence because the argument is: listen, when America declared its independence. It had no relevance or reference to the African Americans in the country. What, what's your response we to that? We know this. I, I agree. It was a different world. But but here's the issue that I have: the, the same people who want to be woke and point out the differences in how African Americans weren't free Juneteenth. The same people were off on the fourth, and they were barbecuing and drinking. But they always want to make a point. Why didn't you just go to work and tell the man with your fist in the air? I want to work. I mean, if, it, if it's that big of an issue, I believe in redemption. The, comp- the country has done a lot of things wrong, but we still live in the greatest country on earth, I believe. So instead of always pointing out the wrong, if you're patriotic, if you love your country, and that's really just a, the obvious definition, let's just celebrate the country and, and all that it does. You can always point at historical things. And that's that whole revisionist history that I don't get. I'm going back to the Democrats again. They always want to undo something as if they're going to be able to take that stain away. <laughs> All right, so 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 DJ C, C, DJ CEO's lips, they just they were moving again. He was trying to get words out. Go ahead, DJ CEO. What, what? So, Professor, I, I heard you throw Juneteenth in early. Tell me what is your thought about Juneteenth? Well, when, when African Americans got word that they were finally, sick. I know what it is. What What is your thought about it? Should we celebrate oh, on the that? right side of it? What, yeah, what's this? What, what, right. what, tell me. What's what you asked me? My thoughts about Juneteenth. Juneteenth. Yes. Is it is it a holiday that we should be celebrating? Uh, or should, event should, or should, something we oh. commemorate? What are your thoughts about it? Um, I don't know that I would say. 
it's it's uh where, 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 you, you, bad because I, I can't say that I'm going to, I can't say you, that, yeah, we, it should be a holiday, but if it is a holiday, if someone proposes it to be a uh, holiday, great, it's a holiday. Okay, now, well, my, Professor. Here's my point. All right. We, we've had years to do that. We, we've had decades to do that. You know, it, it's always a convenient argument when someone wants to argue a point on a, on a holiday and one of the well, black people didn't have it. We know what black people don't have. We all have access to history books, and we all have access to Google. We know that. Why did we take every opportunity to celebrate a holiday to, to remind someone of what happened years ago? But isn't that what Fourth of July? We're reminding yeah. people of something that happened, happened years, years ago. ago. Yeah, I think so. What, what? We we are but we are also reminding anniversaries, all that stuff for those, and, and where we are, where we've come. What's I mean, the, there, there's there's time for that. I mean, and, and we we cover that. We used to do that in Black History Month. Well, well, let, let, people say Black History Month should be all year. I agree with that. Let, let me I say, don't mind when you're celebrating. I just it bothers me when we take the time to to want to be woke on the fourth. But no other day do we do that. I, I just, I, well, let me look at that. But I, I think that's 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 disingenuous because I believe that there is a concerted effort by a lot of people in this country to lift up the uh, contributions, the presence, the impact, and the experience of African Americans year round. The, the 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 problem with it is it has been so effectively suppressed by the system of our our governance that doesn't want to acknowledge listen we weren't perfect this country this country did some horrific things and some great things we did both of those things and it struggles what? to say both of those i'll tell you the best is uh, uh, the battle of the little battle of the little big hey, hey, Custer's last stand. Yeah, they've done a great job with that entire presentation of showing the cavalry's perspective and then the Indians' perspective from the Indians okay. side of it. And they stand there side by side. You can absorb both of those and walk away with a full feeling of the event. And not just one which was for a couple hundred, hundred years or more mm -hmm. told from one direction. Yeah. That is part of what's, what I think the Juneteenth, the 4th of July is about independence. The reality of it was, though, it wasn't my independence. Yeah, it, I had no nothing in that was going in my direction whatsoever. In fact, it became more repressive after the independence because the British were moving away from slavery. And, and, and the reason I brought up Juneteenth, Professor, is, is back in the late 90s, my wife and I, uh, promoted Juneteenth here, here in Tampa. In Tampa, we yes. did it for four years mm -hmm. in a row, and, and the the the, the uh, um, we also promoted the African American flag as part of the Juneteenth celebration. So the red, black, and green flag was a part of our Juneteenth celebration. So I ask I ask uh, uh, Tampa residents, well, residents across the country, to be quite honest, uh, to fly the flag on June nineteenth. So uh, that's a holiday that. Did not really take off like I wanted it to. It did in Texas and some and other it always areas. Has been. It, see, it's that's always been around. Texas and Oklahoma has always done a but, much bigger celebration. But what I believe that we need is we need legislation, federal legislation, right. that declares Juneteenth as a holiday so that the, the, the country will embrace that holiday and, of course, embrace that flag, since we're talking about flags, Nike, uh, so that uh, on June 19th we can celebrate that holiday and on July 4th we can celebrate that. So we got two holidays to celebrate three weeks, two weeks apart. And I don't know that one takes away from the other. It does not. Well, okay, but let's add some color to this thing. We had a black president for eight years, but you know what we got in that? We got gay marriage out of that, and that was a heavier lift. So why why wasn't this an issue under his administration? Yeah, I'm all for we, it, we didn't I bring it up. Time right, 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 because I, I, I believe one of the things Obama did a really good job of being president of the United States and not president of the black people of America. Absolutely. He, he didn't do that. Well, he, he should have been. He but no, he, didn't, been no of, he was he was president of the, of the United entire States. country, mm -hmm. and he was not elected to take up issues within the black community. And, and okay, I, so while I, I would, one of these issues, while I wish he you had. You don't agree that we had the biggest opportunity? I mean, but here's the thing. If America, 
is going to be anything that the Democrats wanted to be. I don't think the Democrats would have been angry if a black president took the time. Oh, absolutely. Whoa, 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 whoa. I disagree with you because the, re- the, the recognition and the embodiment of what Juneteenth shows you, that's not Republican or Democrat. That's racial. And there are whites and right. blacks on both sides of this thing all around that impact that. But he did, I, 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 I believe that he did a really good job of when he became president. Well, of course you believe he did a great job. Of, I well, I'm just saying in general, but, but he didn't enough. become. He served as president, and he, his, his messaging was, I'm president of the United States, and he tended to lean in that direction. But listen, our professor, hang on real tight. We're going to take another break here. Esteban is using his hand signals that, that we're working on. It's almost got his sign language down. A one three four 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 nine five eight. That is the call-in number if you can call in. Also, if you want to watch us live on, t- on, on Facebook, you can do that in text news or on Facebook website. page. Take a look at us. Uh, We'll be right back after the break. experience in auto accident injuries. Call Ricky at 844-361-7425. After an auto accident, you have 14 days to seek medical attention. You may be in pain, so call Ricky, ask Ricky for your best options. 844-361-7425. Call Ricky, ask Ricky is a legal and medical referral service. The lawyers in our network pay to receive referrals. Everybody's a star. This is straight up the middle. I'm attorney Clint Parrish and still we hit the in touch studio, uh, new studios. I've got DJ CEO on this side of the table this morning on the board. Yeah. You know, listen, if you're looking at us on Facebook, he's a really good looking guy. Uh, to my right, <laughs> with the cap alpha yeah, side yeah, on, the yeah, white yeah, hat yeah. on. Brother's, brother's got his <laughs> rainbow shirt going. I mean, you're looking fly this morning. As, as always, a snazzy. Anybody that knows Daryl Johnson knows. <laughs> the brother dresses for the moment. And uh, uh, attorney, uh, I mean, uh, Professor uh, Seabrook is on the phone with us, uh, hanging in there. You still with we us? Just, we lose him again. He had to take okay. a break. Let's okay. see if we can get him back on. But we were just talking about uh, the Bessie Ross flag uh, and that whole dynamic. Uh, but let, let's move on to another topic because this is something I'm watching really close. I was, like, sh- stunned at how fast Kamala Harris shot, shot up, up in the numbers. And right now you've got— I, I can't believe you were stunned. I was stunned— um, because before then, I had nothing distinguishing about her. You know, she's no landmark legislation. She was attorney general in, in California. Right. Uh, she just, you know, she just had no signature, uh, you know, moment, I guess. Well, and let, I didn't know her. Let me exactly. tell you what stunned me uh, okay. w- with, with, with uh, uh, you and, and attorney Stewart. Uh, Attorney Stewart was... Uh, and you talking about you, last week. Last he came week. in the studio. Absolutely. K- K- and so, and and so man, both, yeah, both right. you and, and, and attorney Stewart talked about... Um, Elizabeth Warren. Okay. And I was like, what? 
okay, where, where are these guys been? Because I thought uh, Kamala Harris, uh, my daughter likes to say Kamala, Kamala, Kamala Harris uh, was the uh, was the one that took the show. But y- y'all kind of skimmed over that. And I'm like, well, wh- did they see what everybody else saw? Okay. Well, okay, so so the topic was who had je- – because she hadn't made her mo- – didn't move to the show yet. Okay. Because going into the show, you know, her move came about right the time the show broke. Before that, we saw uh, Warren was moving up. And and so that was really the discussion was is is this is she is she real? We, we see now. Look, <laughs> man, Kamala Harris is just like like bum rush the show, man. She is 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 all she's over taking up, yeah. And she look it's it's like uh, one of the uh, uh, other commentators on one of those shows said she looks presidential. Yeah. Wow. That's right, strong. Right. Right. You've got. I'm just looking at this this ABC Washington poll. It says Biden at thirty percent, Harris at thirteen percent. Sanders at 19%, Warren at 12%. What? Uh, Warren at, at 12%. 12%. 12%. <laughs> Who's just above Warren? Harris. Okay. So it's it's Biden, Sanders, Harris, Warren. That was as of, that's a Wednesday, that's a poll by. Oh, that's old. That's July 3rd. Yeah, that's old. <laughs> uh, oh, uh, um, what's his name? Is at the bottom now. Who's that? Um, Sanders. He's uh, He's falling. He's failed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, the guy that really He's fallen. I'm telling you, the guy that stunned me was this whole issue is Booker's. Cory Booker. Cory Booker. He was the one that made this an issue. He just didn't get the moment at the doggone debate. You know, he didn't have the story. He didn't he, he didn't tell a good story. He and he he comes off as angry to sometimes to me. He does. He comes he, off he as can. angry. He he, he can, know. but he, he does not have even though he has charisma, uh-huh. it's not the right charisma for this mm-hmm. I, I don't you know and he's smart you know i i like cory booker i just don't like him as president it's it, it, he just come, he just I, i'll tell you one thing obama made you feel warm and fuzzy he knew how yeah. to he knew how to be heavy and smile and philosophical he did a re- really great job and, of doing and, that and, and and i just saw i just saw the interview uh-huh. uh with uh obama and uh david uh what was it what's the show host name that that does the uh, sh- thing on Netflix. He's got a beard now. You used to do the night show. Uh, David Letterman. David Letterman. Yeah. Yeah. So have you seen that interview? No, I have not. You need to see that interview. David because, Letterman. Yes. And, and Barack Obama. And Barack Obama. I'll send, we'll hey, do that. Check so, it out. So we've, like this, so we've drifted into talking about these Democratic polls. We got a caller that got a call on the line. We got a caller. Hey, What's Professor, you? you there with us? What's that? Are you there, I'm Professor? Here. I'm yeah, he's here. here. He's oh, here. Okay, good, good. Okay, so, so we're talking about the Democratic polls uh, I just looked at ABC poll and, and uh, I was being chastised by DJ CEO that your poll is outdated. It was taken on the third. This is the sixth. The sixth. I guess we need, we need today's poll. But it showed that Kamala Harris in third place uh, behind Bernie Sanders in front of Warren. And the issue is 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 her rise substantive or is it is it just in response to what people saw her do at the debate? What are your thoughts about that? I think it's in response to what they saw her do. Um, unfortunately, that's the nature of Democrat politics. It's, it's go for the juggler vein. It's make everyone feel that they're not helping black people enough. And that's where she went. And she went back with the old dog, with the old sea salt. And again, I've been remiss, and I have a lot of things on my plate. I even tried to watch the first um, debate. But when they started speaking Spanish, it was too funny, and I just couldn't watch anymore. Un momento, por favor, para esas horas. Wait a minute. When you got against the Hispa- speaking Spanish, what's, what's that about? Man, next you're going to say, get off my lawn. <laughs> <laughs> so here's my thing. And, and now that made her relevant. She went after Joe Biden. She scored a big punch on the heavyweight contender. Okay. Everyone knows that Biden is right now, he's still, although his lady are down, He's still leading the way and looks like he's going to be the nominee. I mean, barring something else crazy happens, someone else gets a good lift on him. Right. But so, so I, and I agree. I, I, I was surprised also, and it was kind of funny. I think Biden was. I believe that there's been a, there was a backdoor agreement with the Democrats to not attack each other because there's very, been very little attack. Not like Donald Trump did when he was running. He just, you know, slammed everybody, called everybody names, and, you know, Pointed at people and yell your mama, whatever. He did whatever he wanted. I, I have not, and I think that's what Biden was surprised by. Like, wait a minute, this is actually a real attack on right. a substantive issue. And the issue wasn't that she was saying he was racist. 
you put this with the hands on the shoulders, with the vote for the uh, uh, Iraq War, with the vote for the uh, Clinton crime bill, and she's attacking his judgment. Absolutely. That's really what it, the attack wasn't to say that Joe Biden was a racist. Right. It was to say, I think, which is going to be the argument I, I would say that any half decent Republican would make is this is not about whether you're racist or not. It's about that your your judgment reflected over many years is not consistent with what we need in the White House now. What are Today. your thoughts about that? Uh, I, I, I like how you dressed that up. It was veiled as a racial attack. His judgment dealing with racial things, especially. And that she, she had enough in there that you can make that nice, politically correct argument that you just said. It was about his judgment. She wanted to score that to show that she is the minority that you can trust. She did a good uh, job with that. Well, 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 let me see if I got you. I, I don't know. I don't know about if she's a minority that you can nah, trust. I, I, she just the, the person you can trust. See, up. see, yeah, you, you qualified on, it man, when you said man. minority you yeah, can trust. Why did you even go there, yeah, Professor? He's a Republican. Come on, man. That's what Republicans do. What? 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 They're the their identity politics on steroids in the Republican Party. Jeez. Oh my goodness, we have identity politics. Come on, you guys. Come on, man. Everybody. I can't believe you, you did that. Every identity is not represented. It's racist. It, it, it's not inclusive. If every identity is not represented somewhere, it's racist. But and and I'll even accept DJ CEOs. I know he, you know, kind of squints when I said minority. <laughs> what I wanted to say was, see. What? Well, what I accept? Look, look, okay, man, yeah. Yeah. I, I here's what I thought. Here, here, here's what I thought she did. Yeah. Here's what I thought she did, though, Kamala Harris. Okay. Is your your road to the Democratic nomination is through the black community. And she's a newcomer on national politics. So most of your black voters are already parked with Joe Biden or Sanders. The young ones are with Sanders. The old true blue yeah. Democratic black community is with church Joe Biden. members, they were Joe Biden. Right. And she went right. to something that would be a, a, an issue to say. She was saying to the black community, hey, y'all, I get this. Because I know. Okay, so what are, I, black, are they not the minority community? They're, they're the black community. I just used the wrong term, right? I yeah, just the wrong yeah. Term. There's a lot of folks. When you say minority, there's a lot of folks in there. But listen, because but let, me, cause let me just say this. Because what <laughs> she was saying was this, is she was being accused of not being black enough. And when she exactly. went, and, and, and the busing thing within the black community, it, 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 it harkened back to uh, one of the biggest victories for access because it gave people in the black community access to the same or effort to offer to the same quality education that other people were getting at their schools, the same with good books and new books and, and all the facilities and, and that you could no longer now deny. And there are so many black people in our community who've been uplifted by that access point. That's what I thought she did. And the fact that she, 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 she may have come across even more willing to take on that fight than what you accused Barack Obama of doing. Mm. That's why I think but, she jumped yeah. so much because there ain't that many AKAs in the country. <laughs> okay, so, so here's the thing. There are two things. I told somebody this the other day. I just saw a, another picture of Kamala Harris. I'm thinking, she's looking off the tan. You know that's all. Ah, <laughs> stop she's it. Cute. You stop she, that. She's looking <laughs> at darker complexion than she was stop before. It. Before she, you know. So what you, the what you trying to say? What you trying to say? You wrong. <laughs> Identity, right Republican there. identity right politics. Man. Republican but identity. <laughs> you guys act like you guys act like Colin Kaepernick was always had his hair braided. Man, I, I, hope, your, I hope your students <laughs> ain't okay, listening okay, to you right okay. now. Okay, I'm gonna leave that alone. Too. I'm gonna leave that alone. Let, wow, let me get back, man, uh, <laughs> let me get back to this because you're right. But to your point, Clint, she has to target those older voters. And the busing issue is only going to uh, be relatable to those older voters because the millennial African-American voter, they, they can care less. And I hate to say it like that, but we know it's true. They, right, because they, 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 they didn't have to go through the fight. Well, they don't, and they don't see... They didn't have to go through the fight. And they and don't see not, the, the, not, the effect of not getting that. And before we go to the break, I, I just want... I, I think Kamala Harris's attack on Joe Biden was just to let... To let uh, 
the America know that she's tough enough to I, take on I, anybody right, exactly. and that she is presidential. She's ready yeah, yeah. And, and that a woman is ready to be president. That's what I'm talking That's what about. it was all listen, about. I, we pre- listen, you listen to Intex News Radio, Reality Radio. Uh, where everybody's a star. This is Attorney Clint Paris. We're going to go to our last break and come back and wrap this thing up. All right. <laughs> My name is Gil Sampson. I didn't come from a very rich family, and so paying for college would have been very tough. I don't know if I would have been able to go to the college that I went to, and then I don't know if I would have gotten into the career that I am in. So I think Bright Futures has done a lot to shape my life. I got a job as a structural engineer, and I design residential buildings, commercial buildings all over the United States. Because of Bright Futures, I was able to go to college. You know, so many kids just don't even ever get that opportunity. And to be able to do it and not have any debt when I graduated is amazing. And it was all thanks to Bright Futures. Florida has created more than one million jobs in only five years, and a great education connects our students to these exciting opportunities. That's why the Florida Lottery has funded Bright Futures scholarships to help over 725,000 students attend college. Because every play is for education. The Florida Lottery. Just imagine. This is Linda Archie with Tyler Temple United Methodist Church. Join us every first and third Saturday of the month at the Village Market East Tampa, 3206 North Sanchez Street. Free parking, free admission, fresh produce, live entertainment, vendor shopping, and delicious cooked food. Join us every first and third Saturday of the month beginning June 22nd. For vendor information, call me 1-888-991-2502. See our ad in In Touch News or Florida Sentinel. Please call me at 1-888-991-2502. The Village Market at East Tampa, 3206 North Sanchez Street. Keeping you informed, in tuned, and in touch. Your worldwide radio connection, In Touch Radio. Listen, if you haven't done it yet, you got about five minutes to still get in on the conversation. I know my man Carl is out there somewhere. 813-444-9588. Listen, we were just finishing up a segment talking about busing, and, and I want to say uh, congratulations to my son, uh, Temperance Paris. Uh, the IB exams have just come in, and I don't know if you all know much about the IB programs that are throughout the entire world, the International Baccalaureate Program. We have uh, about four of the of the nation's leading programs right here in, in Hillsborough County. And my son attended at Strawberry Crest. My understanding is that in their program, check this out, there was a 100% Pass passing, rate. Pass rate wow. on the IB exam. You know, that's 100 percent percent. Uh he is up at Florida State. The announcements just came congratulations. in. Congratulations. Want to congratulate him. And here's what's really good about that. Well, that's a hand clap for Yeah, for yeah a hand clap that's for a hand clap Temperance for Paris. T P uh, call him T P for sure. Freshman at Florida State. <laughs> yes. What's really good about that is, man, we get that's free tuition. That's we a get full free load. tuition. Full ride. <laughs> We right. get free tuition. That's Absolutely. right, man. Absolutely. So uh, I'm happy about that. Congratulations. I'm real proud of him. He's worked hard. He's doing a good job. A good looking young man. And uh, he's got the world. Thanks to his mama, by the way. Yeah, Thanks yeah, to his mama. Great genie pool she <laughs> threw in there. But he's got the world at his fingertips. Because of things like the, what busing did and forced communities to come up with the, what they call these unitary systems yeah. of integration so that everybody had opportunities through magnet schools and things of that nature. But let's get into this last segment real good. We got the professor. You back on the line with the professor? Are you there, professor? All right, well, we want to get into this last topic as we go, as we finish up the show. And this is something we got, it's interesting, we got an all male discussion here going mm. about is America ready? For a woman president. Where? Is America, think about this. Mm. In the 1980s, you've had England have a, 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 a woman prime minister. Almost 40 years ago, you had a woman prime in England. Indira Gandhi 
has been president of India, I mean, prime minister of India, around the world in, in very repressive countries, you've had women rise to the top level of right. governance. Uh, Angela Merkel has been an incredible leader of, of, of Europe and Germany yes. for, for over a decade. The question is, is America ready with its, its, its advancement and its efforts at inclusion? Uh, is America ready for a woman president? And, and, I, and I wonder about that, uh, DJ CEO, because I, 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 I heard the collective harumphs throughout America with the Me Too movement. And this is what I'm going to say this right. I'm going to say it like this. Are we, we cut by the FCC. Yeah. We, we independent. We, 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 we independent, internet. but we got a second caller. I just we got another you, caller? Yeah, we got let, another let caller. Let me say that. I usually won't say this, but I'm going to say it out loud. All right. Men have been slapping women on their asses for decades and looking them in the face going, what are you going to do about it but take it? Right. And the Me Too movement allow women to say, listen, we're not putting up with this crap y'all been doing, just objectifying us in subtle mm. and demonstrative ways. Mm -hmm. I mean, forcing us to wear diff different clothes than you all wear. Things of that nature just right. because you can. And I say that to say, does that reflect whether or not America is ready is ready for a woman president? We got a caller on the line. Caller, will you state your name where you're calling from? Oh, it's me again. Okay. <laughs> Carl, is Carl. that Carl and the professor? Carl and the professor. All right, professor, let me get Carl. Let me get Carl in a, a, a resident Biden supporter. And I don't know whether he's a chauvinist or, or not. I'm going to leave that alone. But, Carl, do you think America is ready for a woman president? If so, why or why not? Yeah, um, I, 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 I think, well, with, with this. With the uh, climate, of course, you know your racial climate now. Uh, nowadays, probably not, but uh, uh, because it's just you remember uh, Hillary Clinton, she ran too, and because of uh, you know her uh, situation, just being a woman, I guess I think not. But then you look at uh, uh, Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris, she has a um, she has the, the, the right package to be um, to be a uh, president, but. Uh, you know, the race is going to be an issue with her. You think it's more red? Well, hold on. We've crossed this whether America's ready for a black president issue. We passed that. So race is not the issue. We've proven America is ready for a black president, a black secretary of state, and all the other black things you can think Attorney of. Attorney general. Black people want to go do. Black quarterbacks, all that. We passed that. The issue is whether we're ready for a, a woman. You and, know. and just let me yeah. let, let me say, no, 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 no. Let, let me say, we, we are ready, it, and, and we're ready based on Hillary Clinton's performance. See, if if, if Hillary but Clinton she didn't win, though. No, no, she didn't win. But wait, 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 but wait, wait let me finish. Wait, wait, she, wait a minute, Carl. Hillary, Hillary this, this, Clinton go ahead. was eighty thousand votes away from winning. Now, out of millions of votes, so that tells me that America is ready for a woman. I think that says America's almost because she didn't. The issue she didn't win. Well, well, it's because well, I'm, I'm just I'm just alleging that I'm I'm alleging that the the. That we'll find out that the uh, that it was actually stolen. That was some that was some stuff. That was, well, some stuff that was some something going on. Yeah, something going on. Okay, all, all right. right. We'll say, I, I mean, the question is though, Professor, what are your thoughts? Is America ready for a, a woman president? I don't think we. No, no, no. I take it back. We are ready, but I'm not sure we're ready for a woman president that sides with the Me Too movement. Not that you have to be against it, but the Me Too movement. It has brought with it an undertone of anything a man has done to you. As a matter of fact, if he just made you feel uncomfortable, you, you say it, whether or not it's true or not. And that's enough. That gives enough voters pause to not put a woman in who is so far into the meet, especially the ones who are involved in the Kavanaugh confirmation. Oh, no, 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 let me say this, though. The P2 men is real. That is. The, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. What, what what women have been subjected to and had to just hold, just say nothing, what they had to tolerate in the workplace and then just go about their business. These these rapes that have been reported and assaults at the at military academies and things of that nature where women come out and say, look, I knew for my career I couldn't say nothing and I just let it go. Other environments where women have just suffered and moved on. That is absolutely real. Now, as we found out with the uh, 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 Now They See Us, there have always been people that accuse people of things and they were prosecuted for it wrongly. That's nothing new. 
we're gonna leave we'll leave that be, let that be what it is but that doesn't discount the way that women have been objectified and forced to accept it just because men were in power that is I, I, that, that is absolutely as real as it gets but, but no no one said that my point is there's also a balance to the me too and what you are saying to me empowers more um, more women who just want to be a part of the conversation, who just want to be relevant because something may have happened, that it, it, to me it muddies the water. I'm all for it because I am a man. I've been in some situations where I've been, it seems like someone had been saying I had done something when I knew I hadn't done anything. You have to be careful. As an African-American man, you have to be careful. Absolutely. I agree with that. I agree with that. And when a white woman shows up, you have to be double careful. So my point is, if I have to be so careful as to not possibly in any way make this woman feel uncomfortable just being me, then there's something about that situation, too. So, So people who are so headstrong about this Me Too and don't see any downside to it, I.e. A, a Kamala Harris, I, I have some pause about that. Well, I, well, I don't know that she did. The downsides I say is this. I think there are a lot of men who who, who are well-intended need to really probably examine how they've treated women over the years. Over the years. S- simple well, stuff. Without give, a doubt. Just, 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 let, me just, good example. let me give you a good example. As a comp- I won't even name the company. Working for a Fortune 500 company as an IT support person, I had a person, and it was even for women white women. She, she was Hispanic. She said, well, I don't feel comfortable talking to Tony because he makes me nervous. Well, what a, so now I have to somehow justify being a man and how I walk through and how I deal with people. You don't feel comfortable talking to me. You didn't say it to me, so I have to get it, you know, by way of someone else. I have to make out what exactly is going on, and then no one tells me what's going on. That's the situation I'm talking about. So here again, but I'm not the only one. Yeah, and my, my point is, yeah. I'm all for the Me Too movement. I have a daughter. I'm all for that. But I also know that there, there, there has to be some some boundaries. And well, there, there, like there's no doubt that we, we should have an equitable way that we look at stuff where that there's a presumption of, of, of innocence. Of, of innocence, If yeah. somebody but accused you, you're presuming. Yeah. But, but there, there, let me tell you. Me Too pre- didn't give that. Yeah, well, that's that, well, I think you're overgeneralizing. The idea that you, you have you the, the, you have your proven until, you know, like you, Donald you, Trump. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Donald Trump. He's been accused of a number of guilty. things. He's like, I didn't do it and until somebody proves I did and I ain't did it and yeah. I'm going to go on about uh, my uh, business. Joe Biden. Well, Joe again, Biden Joe, Joe Biden, he accused of stuff. Joe thought about it a little bit. They showed yeah. some video of Joe's hands on yeah, shoulders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Joe realized, hey, Joe maybe I shouldn't, maybe, be, uh, maybe it I shouldn't be grabbing it's, it's, everybody. It was, it was weak, but but it's okay. Conceptual. Uh, uh, um, let me say that the only thing that will get us beyond this is electing a female president to 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 um, to allow us to get beyond the 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 Me Too complaints now. Wow, well, all right, just oh, like sure. we've gotten Michigan. beyond the, the I'll, I'll, complaints I'll, I'll, I'll with with boxer. Barack Obama. Right. Now we need it's it's time for us to do that because we it's time to let, really. Let, let, call, call, are you still there? Yes, I am. Okay, Carl, you're in a very male dominated industry, trucking. Yes, trucking. Very few women out there. Do you see this Me Too issue showing itself in your profession? Oh, oh, definitely, yeah. And 30 oh, seconds, oh, got 30 yeah. seconds. We, and how do y'all deal with that? How do we deal with that? We just, you know, uh, w- women just have to, um, it, 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 it gets very edgy because women are already fighting to be uh, acknowledged and, and, and they're fighting for, for you know, to play a role in a, in right. a male-dominant uh, industry. So, so, so you have to give them their, their space or whatever, but also you have to, being that it's, just, it's a physical uh, job too, so okay. some things they, they can't they can't do. Right. So you know there, there's a yin and a yang where you have to consider that she's a female, and you also you have to watch the boundaries that uh, that will put you in a situation. Gotcha. Wait, Carl. Wait, man. We appreciate you calling in as always. Uh, thank you very much for listening in and, and your contributions. Uh, I look forward to your, what you have to say and share with us. Uh, Professor, I'm getting the signal here from Esteban. we got to get out of here. So I want to appreciate you calling in. You'll be back. In t- hey, listen, everybody. Professor, we'll be back in studio next week. Next any, cl- week. Any, any closing remarks, Professor? 
Oh no! I'll see you guys next week with my Betsy Ross cap. <laughs> you come on, listen. Uh, all right, I, I, listen. You, win. I got stuff for that. All right, I, I got, I got so much kente, bro. <laughs> you go fly. Hey, appreciate you very much. I want to also appreciate DJ CEO Daryl Johnson uh, for sitting in with me. Uh, I really enjoy our time here this morning. It's really good for us. And if you're out there, listen. Be safe. Finish celebrating America's independence, your independence, and all that matters to you. And we'll be back next week. See you. Peace. Join me every Monday at 7 p.m. for Jazz at Miss Connie's House, bringing you the smoothest jazz and the coolest guests right here on In Touch 